everyone now moving ahead with the next chapter in the 10 minute revision series here i bring lungs yes a lot of requests came for the lungs and this chapter will talk about the entire pathophysiology of the different diseases the basic treatment management part and the complications that can happen with the various lung diseases let's start it look in the lungs you must notice first of all on the basic normal histology so normal histology in the bronchus part is respiratory epithelium then comes the smooth muscle layer then comes the peribronchial um, glands and then comes the cartilage layer remember when you have a cartilage layer it means it's bronchus and when you only have an alveoli like this it means you're dealing all with the case of alveolar acinus or an alveoli okay remember an alveoli these all red ones are the capillaries and in between there's a very fine interstitium you can see there start with the first histology here and the first one is actually a heart failure cells a very important part in a heart failure cells you get what is called as a hemosiderated macrophages seen in the left ventricular heart failure because of increase in the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure then comes the basic pathophysiology of the ARDS ARDS is also called as non-cardiogenic non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema in this non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema what happens there is actually a neutrophils and that actually is coming because of all the stimulation you can see from the etiologies so etiology basically stimulates the macrophage the macrophage stimulates the neutrophils neutrophil will then first damage the endothelium here and then will move into the alveolus. here they will start releasing the protease leukotrienes and the pap which will damage the entire type 1 and the type 2 pneumocytes what happens initially is a interstitial edema and then what happens is a completely pulmonary edema the histopath of this entire thing is called as hyaline membrane disease in which you see there is a alveolar collapse there's an interstitial edema there's a neutrophil infiltration and you this all pink cells are only the hyaline which actually is a fibril leaking out and the necrose type 1 and the type 2 pneumocytes okay from this we now move to the yes a copd a copd has two main components one is a chronic bronchitis and one is emphysema a chronic bronchitis means there is actually a actually there's a more of more than three months of chronic protective cuff in the absence of any infections so actually chronic bronchitis occurs because of what it occurs because of the irritation and that irritation usually is in the form of smoking or maybe in the form of mineral dusts so in chronic bronchitis what is important to understand is there's increase in read index so read index is actually a ratio of the mucin gland layer thickness divided by the complete respiratory epithelial layer thickness and that ratio being more than 0.4 is definitely pointing towards a chronic bronchitis this is an emphysema in emphysema what you see is a dilatation of the lungs and that happens mainly because of the destruction of the acinus remember it is of three types centriacinar panacinar and the periceptal remember among them the most common being centriacinar and that actually involves the apex of lung and the main etiology being smoking very very importantly and what it shows this shows a very finely laden this uh, interstitial septa and what you see is a destroyed acinus all together with this okay so acinus in in the emphysema is completely destroyed and that destruction occurs in both proximal and distal in the panacinar only in the proximal area in the century as the emphysema seen in the smoking part about the asthma so asthma is basically a type 1 hyper in which there's a destruction of the respiratory epithelial cells this infiltration of the neutrophils and basically the eosinophils and mast cells in the lamina propria layer and then you see also the muscle getting hypertrophied because of the continuous stimulation occurring there also there is a more and more mucin secretion ultimately what you see is a complete remodification of the airway epithelium so you what you expect is a 3c in the bronchial asthma in bronchial asthma what you expect is a 3c that means a charcoal red crystals which actually is a eosinophil crushing artifact you see a kirschman spirals which actually is a impacted mucin plugs and not to forget the creola bodies which is a destroyed respiratory epithelial cells then what to move into is a bronchiectasis uh, what happens in prognosis is the dilatation and destruction of the large airways and that happens because of chronic necrotizing inflammation this inflammation can be a staph aureus can be tuberculosis it can be aspergillus and can also be some other findings like that can be congenital infections yes it is cardinal syndrome and cystic fibrosis can also be an association here it can also occur because of foreign bodies and not to forget the autoimmune diseases they can happen here and so the basic treatment here is yes it is an antibiotic treatment that should be given here Next one is read index. As I already told you, it can be seen in a chronic bronchitis case. It's an increase in the mucin gland layer thickness compared to the complete respiratory epithelial layer thickness. A ratio of more than 0.4 is pointing towards an increase in the read index that is chronic bronchitis. Finally, mood as in the pneumonia. Pneumonia, it can be a complete lower pneumonia as you see in this image or can be a bronchopneumonia in which you see the complete patchy involvement of this area. 
a pneumonia also occurs in the three main stages a pneumonia occurs in three stages that means it can occur in initially there occurs congestion and after congestion there occurs a early red hepatitis what is red hepatitis so when you see a rbc with a fibrin the fibrin makes it a liver like consistency for red hepatitis and when this rbc break down to form a fibrin and that becomes a gray hepatitis so first is congestion next is early red hepatitis then becomes a gray hepatitis and then comes a resorption of the entire stage or may go into the fibrotic stage so it is actually a type of pneumonia two types bronco and the lower pneumonias next one is actually a carcinoma so in carcinoma you expect there's a gland formation of adenocarcinoma or you see a squamous cell cancer first of all you should understand that a gland formation adenocarcinoma it actually is having a mutation of egfr1 or a kras mutation the squamous cell cancer it has a mutation of a p53 it can also be a p33 mutations notice in this image you can see these all other glands and look at the mucin here this is showing you a ttf1 positivity which is actually a used ihc in this case then you see what here is actually a case of squamous cell cancer which can show you a p33 mutation and is also is an immunohistochemistry one thing is called as adenocarcinoma in c2 which shows a typical lepidic pattern in which you see a butterfly sitting on a fence remember it is adenocarcinoma in c2 that means a pre invasive lesion of the frank adenocarcinomas then comes the squamous cell cancer in a squamous cell cancer the normal morphology of the cell is called as old cell carcinoma in which you can see this is salt pepperchromatin not to forget they belong to the neuroendocrine tumors and so they can lead to carcinoid syndrome in which you see a diarrhea flushing and cyanosis they will have a very high mitosis because they are malign tumors and look at the high these all red, dark red, black ones are the mitotic figures also remember they are the tumors which can lead to what is called as azo party effect and that is what you see is a bluish staining in the vessels it is called as azo party effect remember something called as carcinoids so carcinoid is what it shows with the finding of a of the patient having diarrhea flushing cyanosis and remember carcinoid is having a histology of this tumor nest and in the tumor nest you again see this salt pepper chromatin cells and that always contain a neuro secret granules in the electron microscopy not to forget that these carcinoids can be of two types there is a typical and a atypical carcinoid where a typical carcinoid has a less than two uh, two per hyperfill uh, mitotic figures well more than two becomes a atypical carcinoid and therefore it is more and more malignant in nature finally moving from here into what is called as mesotheliomas so remember it is very important to differentiate a concept of mesothelioma versus an adenocarcinoma and that is differentiated by electron microscopy if you see a long branching microfibrils without attached to the base it becomes a malignant mesothelioma but if you see a short plum microvilli and that is attached to the base it is actually a finding of adenocarcinoma of the lungs finally we move to the topic of what is called as pneumoconiosis in pneumoconiosis what you expect to see is three types it can be a silicosis so what we get in silicosis is that silicosis is caused mainly by the silica particle which can be the crystalline and amorphous more dangerous is crystalline variety and what you see here is a silicotic nodule remember a silica has more tv rays and a silica it shows a eggshell calcification and the peri hyalur calcifications also remember there is something called as a malignant mesothelioma which occurs in an asbestosis case and that has two types of body it's a ferruginous body and also it has what is called as it also has what is called as a ferruginous body among them more specific is a yes asbestosis body or asbestos body then you see this is actually an asbestos body look at the sheet cover appearance you see here and that is because of the asbestos coated with the iron and glycoprotein ring then what you see here is a coal worker pneumoconiosis and you see entire coal particles being as you see here and that is what is called as anthracosis so anthracosis is actually a coal worker pneumoconiosis in which you see just a coal macules and a coal nodules there is just a macrophage having a coal particle is macule and a macrophage with a coal particle and around them if you find a, a, a layer of fibrosis you call it coal nodules then you see this actually is a um, deposition of coal particles and that gives a typical blackish pigmentation in the lungs remember any finding of uh, this is just a, a, a quick quiz for you and i hope you can all answer it if you see excel calcification it is silicosis a silicosis shows a silicotic nodule and the same can also be seen in actual polarized microscopy and all these are the silica particles being seen on a polarized microscopy i'm very sure you would have liked this like this session 
if you did like this please subscribe to my channel and wait for more videos to come put in the comment box what next chapter you want and i'll bring the same to you for rapid revision before the neat exam best of luck best wishes may you shine forward bye bye